Happy Wednesday, everyone. We got a fun little work set for you guys. We got a three grounder coming up at you. But before we get to that, let's talk about our warm up. Our warm up is going to consist of some balance work and some single leg work. So we have our back scale raise for five, single leg good morning with rotation for three aside, side scale raise for three aside, side lunge for six total count at a 303 tempo. Then our, so our front scale raise for five aside and our standing lunge for three aside. So we're going to work on a lot of skill work here, just waking up the legs after yesterday. And we're going to hit that for two rounds. After that, we're going to start busting into some dumbbell work to get ourselves ready for the work set. Our dumbbell deadlift for three, dumbbell knee power clean for three, and dumbbell push press for three with a 20 to 30 second overhead hold at the end of that last push press. Once you're done that all on one side, you'll repeat on the opposite side and take that down and get yourself ready to go just working on those key skills that we're going to use in the work set. So our workout today consists of a nice kind of array of uh, weightlifting and gymnastics. So our workout today consists of three rounds, 10 front squats, 15 push-ups, 10 deadlifts, 15 V-ups, and 10 push jerks or push presses. And you'll hit that for three rounds, taking that down nice and steady. Now the dumbbell work is gonna go by relatively, relatively steady. The gymnastics work, the push-ups and the V-ups, you're gonna slowly start to kind of creep on you. So we wanna make sure that even if uh, we know we can hit that push-up set unbroken in that first round, but then later on we might be getting you know, caught by it. You know, there's nothing wrong with breaking that push-up setup down in the first round to make sure that we can go the distance and we don't end up going 15. Round two, we're down to doing threes. And then round, yeah, round three, we're down to doing singles. All right, so keep that in mind. Break it up early. Make sure we're solid there. With the dumbbell work, if you have a single dumbbell, we'll do five per side. Uh, breaking up the work between the sides, or if you have two dumbbells, we'll just do the straight up numbers as is. So we'll have some fun. Our goal in this workout is to have the same loading for the push jerk, front squat, and uh, deadlift. But if you do have a multitude of dumbbells and you'd like to do different loading for that, you're more than welcome to kind of play with some different loading for each movement. The lighter of the loading, of course, going towards that push jerk and going overhead. Most likely the heavier the deadlift that front squat being somewhere in between. But again, uh, my intentions of this was to go one load all the way through where you'd cater to the push jerk. So it's up to you, you can see where it takes you, and you can have some fun with that today. You can see where it takes you throughout the work set. Now let's get you warmed up and ready to go. All right, let's get those feet under those hips. We're gonna take the arms big and tall up overhead. Now let's just shrug those shoulders. Let's lose our neck. And let's pull those shoulders back down, finding our neck. We'll reach it over to one side, a little side bend. Come back up, a little side bend. Oh, come back up, we're gonna bring those hands out to the T. We'll turn them in, turn them out, turn them in, turn them out, turn them in, and turn them out. Big reach, big stretch, big stretch. And forward fold, down to the floor, touching those toes. Walk up those shins, we'll come down, framing a foot. We'll step back into our lizard, making sure we're good and strong here. We're gonna take that inside hand all the way up, and we're gonna rotate forearm to floor, as deep as you can, big stretch, opening to the side, and we'll rotate, and come back up, and we'll rotate, and then come back up. Planting that hand, we're gonna step back into our down dog, Reaching those hips and walk those heels out. We did a little bit of jumping the other day, so this will be a nice chance to feel in and check out those feet. And we'll come back into our plank, stepping the other foot up. Nice and solid here in those legs. We'll take the inside hand of the sky, rotate forearm to the floor. We'll come back up and rotate. And come back up and rotate. We'll plant the hand, we'll step back into our down dog, reaching those hips, setting those shoulders as we walk those heels out, nice and slow, nice and steady, just making those legs do their thing. We'll come back into our plank, tiptoeing those feet up, and we're gonna roll ourselves all the way up, big stretch, big reach. Down. Good. Let's get 
get you guys fired up and ready to go. If you like to pause the video though and take down a little bit of gentle warm up to continue on our way to the, the work set, please do so. Pause it, rock it, come back and join me. I'm gonna take you guys through that first phase, which again is a lot of single leg work and a lot of coordination balance work. All right, we're gonna get started with our work set today. We're gonna start off with our back scale raise. So I'm gonna turn profile of the camera so you guys can see this. What we wanna think about is keeping our head to our heel moving as one piece in terms of our balancing. So I'm gonna pick my, my balancing leg to start off with and I'm gonna get that other leg kind of pointing to the back. And I'm gonna straighten out that leg so I'm nice and engaged and square through the hips. From here, I'm gonna pull my hips back a bit as I hinge into this nice parallel to the floor position and stand tall. So I'm working on maintaining a square hip to the floor the entire time. So if I can't get all the way parallel, that's okay. I'm gonna take my body to wherever I feel I can keep that hip square and I can get that nice engagement through the hamstring and get that hinge. So it's a little different than a single leg RDL because the single leg RDL, we're working on that hinge and that knee is soft. This, it's soft, but it's a lot straighter. We're not trying to bend into that knee too much. We're just keeping it soft, not locked out. So take your time with these. Really work on kind of pressing the heel back so we can kind of pretend like we have a PVC tape to our heel, hip, and shoulder. So we just move as one unit the entire time. Our next movement, we're going to work on a little bit of rotation. We're going to work on that single leg good morning with rotation. So my feet are going to come under my hips. I'm gonna get one heel out in front, still space between the feet. I'm not going right in front. I'm keeping my feet about hip width apart. I'm squared my hips. I pull back, keeping my weight through my midfoot in that good hinge. And then I rotate towards that lead leg. And then I stand tall. I don't want you to worry about touching the leg. I just want you to worry about taking it to the range that you can make and maintain that good balance. So the other key factor here is we want to feel this in that upper, upper hamstring, lower glute. So if you're not feeling that, you're feeling it down in the calf, we want to make sure that at the top of this movement, we're squeezing and engaging as we maintain this hinge. So we can really feel that engagement through that hamstring and glute. Moving from that side, or sorry, that single leg good morning with rotation, we're going to move into a side scale raise. So we did this yesterday in our work set as well. We're gonna shift our weight over to the one side. I'm gonna point my toe, I'm gonna stand up nice and tall, squeezing and setting through the hip, and then I'm just gonna squeeze through my glute to lift this leg up to the side. And we wanna make sure that in this lift that we're not leaning to bring the leg up. We wanna try and keep the shoulder, hip, and heel all in one straight line of action as I work on this lift. And it doesn't matter how high this leg goes. We wanna make sure that we're keeping the top of the foot pointing forward and we're keeping that leg nice and straight. So take your time with that. There's three per side. You don't have to rush that too much. We just have to focus on that engagement through that side body. After that, we're gonna go wide with the stance. We're gonna work on a side lunge, but we wanna think squat. So I get myself into this wide stance position Good glute squeeze so that I'm nice and open through the hips. And as I set myself up, I'm gonna try and stay as upright as I can. So I'm gonna pull my hip towards my heel, working on that good squat mechanic, keeping the chest up tall, and working on keeping that foot flat with the weight through the midfoot. So my hip comes down towards the heel, I'm nice and upright, knee is tracking the toe, and I'm pushing through that leg to come back. I also want you guys to really focus on your torso. So if you find that as you start to pull the hip towards the heel and your body starts to hinge forward like a good morning, we want to stop the range of motion. So we just want to take it down as deep as we can maintain that upright torso and build that kind of posture that we want to use in the squat. So really take your time. There's six of those total count with a 303 tempo. So three up, three down. So really take your time on that movement so you can really zone in those positions. 
after our side work, we're going to go into our front scale raise. So again, working on that single leg balance. We want to focus on that strong balancing leg. So my leg is going to come out to the front that's going to be doing the lifting. The other leg is nice and straight down towards the floor. Good glute squeeze. And then we lift and lower. So again, keeping that leg straight, thinking about engaging and lifting from the quad and the hip, and keeping that balancing leg nice and locked out with a soft knee, but we don't want it to turn into a buckling as we lift the leg up. We want to keep that leg really sturdy and a, st a solid kind of post. After that, we're going to move into a little bit more lunge work and some skill work. We did some lunges yesterday, so those legs may be feeling it, but we're just using this to kind of work positions and heat up the legs a little bit. So we're going to get ourselves in our squat stance. You're going to step one foot forward, one foot back. So you're in this long stance and it's about a squat stance width in terms of your feet. Both toes are pointing straight ahead. The back heel is off the floor and we're on the balls of the feet. We're going to squeeze our glutes so our hips are square and we're going to lower straight down, working on keeping this knee stacked over top of the heel and our body stacked over top of our back leg. And then we stand tall. So we're going to work on a nice smooth lower. There's no tempo, but I do like adding in a little three second lower because it really allows us to focus on position and control and allows us to really kind of map out where we're comfortable and where we have that control going down. So we're not just dropping into that lunge. We want to make sure we're controlling the whole descent and the rise. So as a quick recap, we have a back scale raise for five aside, single leg good morning with rotation for three aside, Side, or sorry, side scale raise for three, side lunge for six, alternating 303 tempo, front scale raise for five aside, and a standing lunge for three aside. Two rounds through that gives you a good chance to work on a lot of that lower body work and some balance work with that single leg. Take that down, pause video, rock it. We're gonna come back and start working on some dumbbell skills now that those lower bodies are much more warmed up. All right. So, in our work set today, we have some deadlifts, front squats, and push jerks. But we're going to work on a little, little process that's going to get ourselves warmed up for this little complex, which is going to be a dumbbell deadlift, hang power clean, and a push press with an overhead hold. So I'm going to talk to you as well about if you'd like to add in a few pieces here, you can. But as is the work set, I'm going to turn profile, but I'm going to stand over top of my dumbbell. So it's cutting my foot in half right now. I'm going to pull those hips back and down, keeping my chest up high and those hips a little lower so I can get to the dumbbell. My back position is my primary focus and my weight is through my midfoot as I push through those legs. From here, I can choose now to go just below the knee or wherever I feel comfortable in terms of my range to maintain that good back position. So the hips go back and down and I push through the legs. We want to embrace that hinge and then that lowering of the hip and shoulder together and stand. From here, you can either take the dumbbell from between the knees or from the side, you, whichever one feels more comfortable for you. If you have two dumbbells, you'll go from the side, but with a single dumbbell, we can go between the knees. And we're gonna take the hinge back so the dumbbell comes to the knee. We're going to push those knee, or sorry, push through those legs, driving into that nice explosive hip opening, into that power landing. So I come back down with the dumbbell, standing tall, pull the hips back from my knees, and I'm gonna drive through those legs, land in that nice clean position, stand tall, and then on my last one, I'm gonna keep the dumbbell up on the shoulder. So I work that good hinge to the knee, push through those legs, stand tall, and then I adjust for my push press. So with my push press, I get tight through the ribs, tight through the glutes. I'm going to work that nice dip position. So my shoulders stay over the hips, and then I'm going to drive out of that bottom position. So it looks like so. I dip and drop. And in that drive, I allow my hips and legs to do the work to get the dumbbell overhead. Dip, push. So the arm doesn't do a lot. It just continues the momentum of the leg and the hip. Once I've done my third rep, I'm going to hold overhead in that good overhead position. So I'm going to squeeze through the glutes, squeeze through the ribs, and continually press into that dumbbell as I maintain this overhead position. In an ideal overhead position, 
keep that bicep is slightly behind the ears, but if you're like, I can't quite get there, I want you to just keep pushing up, trying to keep that bicep in line with the ears so that we're over our midsection and not out front. Once we're done our hold, we'll come down and then we'll reset on the opposite side. Now, if you'd like to add in a few pieces in that warm up complex, because we are working on the push jerk in the workout if you'd like, you can substitute the push press for a jerk, or you can start by playing around with that overhead pause dip. So I've done my deadlifts, I've done my cleans, I've done my push press, now I'm into the overhead hold. I can work on, instead of just a standing hold, I can work on a series of overhead pause dips to work on opening up that nice overhead position so what I would do is set my ribs, set my glutes, pressing into that dumbbell. I'm gonna hold at the bottom of that dip for three seconds, keeping the shoulder and the hip and the dumbbell all in alignment, and then stand. So you can hold the bottom of that dip anywhere from three to five seconds, and stand tall. So if you'd like to, you can go between three to five reps of that overhead dip, depending on what you're comfortable with. It's gonna help really open up that overhead position and we'll open up those hips and ankles in that overhead dip. So if you're planning on using the, the jerk, or if you're like, you know what, I struggle with the jerk a lot, that is a really nice, helpful option to help opening up that receiving position for the dumbbell jerk and or the barbell jerk. So play with that if you'd like. If you're like, nah, I'm good on that, that's fine too. All right, you can just work on that overhead position because it's gonna help strengthen that overhead receiving position for the push press, shoulder press, and the jerk. All right, so play with it, have some fun, tweak it a little bit. If you wanna use that pause dip in there with the dumbbell on the shoulder too to reinforce the dip position, be my guest, all right? It all helps and it's all gonna build really good skill in that push press, any power clean, all that good stuff that's gonna help open up those key positions for those movements. As a quick recap, we have a dumbbell deadlift for three, dumbbell hang power clean for three, dumbbell push press for three or jerk, into your dumbbell overhead hold of 20 to 30 seconds. Repeat on the opposite side. Now if you're using two dumbbells, obviously you will not repeat on the opposite side because you've just done it with both hands. So if you'd like to play around with that, enjoy, change it up a little bit, add those pieces in with the pause overhead dip or the pause dips. They are a great uh, addition to that move set. Pause the video, take that down, have some fun. We're gonna go through the movements in our work set that are coming your way right away. The workout is here, or a little practice round is here. And we're gonna move in through those movements that we have in the work set. So, in our complex, we used two of the movements, all right, that we're gonna use in the workout, but we have our front squat in there as well. So, what we wanna work on today is just getting primed up for the front squat. All we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the dumbbell up to the shoulder, so the dumbbell rests on that shoulder position in the front rack. My feet are in my regular squat stand, I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, set my ribs, and I'm gonna pull my hips to my heels, keeping those knees tracking the toes and a little bit of pressure up into that dumbbell. So I'm working on activating and squatting through that good range of motion through that movement. So I'm working on good posture the entire time. Now you can add a tempo in there, you can add no tempo, whatever you'd like to do as you're warming that up a little bit. If you're in the work set, I would highly suggest just working at a pace that you can maintain and get all 10 in a row. So in the workout, if you're using a single dumbbell, you'll do five and five. If you're using two, you'll do 10. Actively pressing into those dumbbells to keep that dumbbell stable and keep that body upright. Afterwards, we have our push-up, and we have a ton of different variations of push-ups we can play with. You can work on an elevated surface, on a counter, chair, ottoman, table, whatever you've been working on to cut down that range of motion. Uh, what we have also is some variations from the floor that we can start to play with as well. So from here, I'm gonna show you three variations from the floor, and they all stem from that nice solid plank. So I pull my ribs in so I get that good engagement through the glutes, press the shoulders up to the sky, and I'm gonna lower forward and down, coming down, keeping those elbows at a nice 45 degree angle as I lower down to the floor. And that's gonna help recruit 
pec, tricep, all that good musculature in that shoulder, opposed to just isolating to the uh, triceps, all right, and or putting you into this kind of compromised position for the shoulder at that wide T position. We kind of meet somewhere in the middle, which helps really stabilize the shoulder really, really well. Now our next variation has all those key points in there as well, except what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower through the toes, so we lower the same way, we maintain tension, lower the knees, press through the knee, finish the rep back into plank. Lower through the toe, press through the knee, up into that next plank. So we have that variation if we have a good lower, but we just can't quite push up through our toes, maintaining position. Key thing here, maintaining tension when we lower the knees. It's super easy to disengage when we drop those knees. We want to make sure we're keeping that body tight the entire time. Now our last variation is from the knees, but I'd like you to establish your knee plank first via the full plank. So I start my position here, I lower my knees straight down so I'm in that nice hollow plank, and then from here, forward and down, and push. Maintaining those good elbows, maintaining that good tension through the midsection, and maintaining that nice forward and down tripod position through the head so pick the push-up position that's going to challenge you, but allow you to be successful in this, to build your push-ups for later on down the road. We want to make sure that we're choosing the progression that's going to allow us to get stronger, not just challenge us. Our next exercise is the deadlift. We have 10 reps of the deadlift, which we covered pretty heavily in our warm-up uh, earlier. So if you need any kind of review on that, just scroll back, check that out. But again, remembering that with the deadlift, I just want you to take it down to the position below the knee that allows us to maintain the best back position. If you can touch the floor with the dumbbells, awesome, do it up. If not, awesome, don't worry about it. Take it down below the knee, work to the edge of your range that still allows you to keep a good back position. Now our next uh, gymnastics movement is our V-up. So we have a couple different variations for the V-up. I'm gonna lay on my back. The first variation is a double leg, double arm, so that full variation of the V-up. I squeeze my toes together, reach my arms long, I'm gonna pull my chest and thigh together to meet in the middle. I come up, I work on lifting the upper body and the lower together. Now if that's too much to get the timing or just too much pressure on the body, we can do the same variation with a single leg. So I meet in the middle, try to touch my toe, as I come up. Now if you're looking at me going, I can't quite do that with a straight leg, I can do it with a tuck though. We can work on that as well. So the chest and thighs meet in the middle, and we come through. Same idea, we have a single leg, reaching, and working through that range of motion. The key thing is, is upper and lower half working together, meeting in the middle. Now if you're looking at that going, it's a lot of hinging, I can't quite control that so much, but I do want to work my hollow. We can do a hollow up. So we're gonna lay nice and straight and flat, and I'm gonna pull my ribs and hips together, pulling my ribs, or sorry, pulling my low back in contact with the floor. In this, I'm gonna lift my shoulders and my feet into a little pulse, into that hollow. If I pull everything nice and tight together, if the double is too much, I can do a single. Again, no, I'm not coming up super high, but I'm getting that nice contraction through the core and it's allowing me to build that hollow strength to build into that nice V-up and or many other core positions we need. Now, if you struggle getting the upper body up and the lower body just kind of flows well, we can work on two things. One of which, a personal favorite, it's a little slower, but it's a very high bang for your buck. We're gonna squeeze our toes together. My legs are up in this L position. My arms are straight. I'm gonna pull my ribs in, reaching for my toes. I'm gonna try and tie my shoelaces, but I'm not using momentum. I'm just using that strong contraction through the ribs. So I'm squeezing to lift that upper body up, but our arms are not swinging or using any momentum to get closer to my toes. My other variation does use some momentum, which is the pipe setup. So my legs are straight, toes together, my arms touch above my head, I'm 
I'm gonna whip my arms up and over, touching my toes, and then I'm gonna roll back down, touching. So I'm gonna get a nice hamstring stretch out of that. I'm gonna allow myself to work on that upper body engagement and a little bit of momentum, like the V-up, which is also very fun. So I just allow, you know, use that momentum. It's not cheating, it's part of that movement today, all right? Last but not least, we have our push jerk. So we come back to our dumbbell. If you're not comfortable with the dumbbell push jerk, then work the push press. But if you would like to venture into the push jerk, what we, what we have is stemming from the push press, all right? So the movement is very similar. I get it up into my front rack, my feet are under my hips or just outside. I set my glutes, set my ribs, and I'm gonna work that same dip, that same drive in the push press. The only difference is, is as the dumbbell starts to rise off my shoulder, I push myself into the bottom of the dip, and I stand. It's not done that slow, it looks like so. So I dip, stand, come back down. So the rep isn't done until I stand up tall, bring the dumbbell back down. So you have to make sure you finish the rep, then bring it down and work that jerk. Now if you're looking at that going, yeah, not quite there yet, all right, that's fine. Work that, um, that overhead pause dip in the warm up. Give yourself those opportunities to practice and build that receiving position. And practice it as we go, because the jerk is probably the, I'd say, the most efficient way of getting the heaviest load overhead um, out there. So it gives you a lot of drive through the legs. It also allows you to push yourself under in a good receiving position and then stand with the weight overhead. So if you're not quite comfortable doing that, rock the push press today, because with a good push press, will come a good push jerk. It is a foundation to the jerk. So rock it, have some fun with it, and make them the best presses you got today. So as a quick recap today, you guys, with this work set, we got three rounds, front squat for 10, push up for 15, deadlift for 10, V up for 15, push jerk for 10 or push press, and then rock it three times through. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Remembering those gymnastics movements are gonna get spicy a little bit later on in the work set. So if you need to break them down early on, please do so. It's a good strategy to allow yourself to maintain some decent sets as the workout progresses. Now have some fun with this one, you guys. Really focus on some good quality movement here. There's a lot of different movement in here, so I want you to pick the movements that you know you kind of struggle with a little bit. Maybe slow them down a little bit. Maybe work a little bit more technique work with them and just make them that much better for later on. As always, you guys, I'm super, super stoked to hear about these work sets. So post about them, let me know what you used, let me know what you did for your V-ups, your style of push-ups, let me know those things, because I'm always interested. If you have any questions, never hesitate, always ask, I'm always around. So, work for quality, have tons of fun today with this one. We're gonna come back at you on Thursday with a nice, fun little work set, and we'll see where it takes us, all right? It's gonna be a good week. Bye, you guys.